Hey, hey, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Looking forward to seeing you guys on here tonight. Who's going to be the first one online for this week's Wiser Wednesday, LifeWise Wiser, Wiser Wednesday? Who's going to be first? It's Valerie. Hey, Val, there you are. <laughs> so glad to see you. You're the first one online with us tonight. Glad to see you. Hey, Jim, how are you, my friend? So good to see you guys. Christy, how are you doing, Christy? Glad that you're here. Hi, Billy, how are you doing? Delenn, oh, great to see you guys jumping on here. There's Jerry. What's up, Jerry? How are you, man? Glad you guys are here. Guys, if you got your Bibles, give you a little heads up in advance. We're going to go to Jeremiah 29 11 tonight. Going to share some hope with you guys. Go to Jeremiah 29 11 if you've got your Bibles. Hey, Tim, there's the ponds in the house. So grab your Bibles, guys. Jeremiah 29, 11. We're going to unpack some scripture. Hey, Sylvia. How are you, Miss Ma'am? Hey, Diane. Glad to have you with me tonight. Good to see you guys on here on our Wiser Wednesdays. Love these Wednesday night teachings. And uh, yeah, Jeremiah 29, 11. I love it, Christy. Jeremiah 29, 11 is so good. We're going to unpack some stuff tonight. I'm hoping that you guys are going to see some stuff that's going to really bless you. Hey, my brother Rob. What's up, brother man? Good to see you. Grab your Bibles, guys. Everybody grab your Bible, pull up your phone, your iPad, whatever you use. Turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Hey, Shirley. Mr. Jim Sellers from Fort Mill, South Carolina. There's Josh. Hey, Joshy. How are you, bud? Good to see you, man. Glad that you're with us tonight. Hey, Mike. We got all the Alwyns jumping, jumping in here. Oh, I'm so excited. Hey, Mark, how are you, buddy? Good to see you, man. Hey, Ronnie. Oh, man, everybody's jumping off. I'm so excited. Listen, hey, Lemon and Eve Evelyn from Canada. Canada's in the house. Hey, Dave. Man, so good to see you guys. Okay, listen, want us to get started. I'm getting so excited reading everybody's names. I'm not paying attention to the time. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Everybody, grab your Bible. Open it up to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Hey, Trish, good to see you. All right, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I love this verse. This is one of the great foundational verses in Scripture that blesses so many of us. We read Jeremiah 29, 11. It is so encouraging. It is so awesome. Um, love it so much. And uh, I wanted to just share with you guys tonight. I, I went in and, and did some study. Now, let me go ahead and tell you some of my secret sauce. When I'm reading the Bible, doing my study, a lot of times I'll go back and I'll open up a, um, or use an app, something like the Blue Letter Bible, which is what I use tonight. Or, or another type of commentary that will go in and really help me unpack scripture so that I fully can embrace and understand what the scripture is saying. And so Jeremiah 29, 11 comes out of the Old Testament, which as we know was written in Hebrew. And so when you're reading our Bible, those of us that are reading English Bible, it is a translation of either a Hebrew or a Greek text, depending on if you're looking at the Old or New Testament. So we tonight are going to be looking at the Old Testament. Here's why that's important, because when we're reading this Bible, we have to realize it's a translation. So I want to understand when I'm reading something, what is the exact, what is exactly being said? What is exactly is God saying here? Okay. So when we look at Jeremiah 29, 11, we want to understand what the Lord is telling us. So I'm going to be jumping a little bit back and forth. Uh, as we really unpack exactly what God is saying here. And when I think about Christmas, and I think about what good news is, that the gospel is good news, when I think of Christmas is really all about hope, when I think of hope and I think of scripture, I think of Jeremiah 29, 11 as one of my scriptures. So here we go. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read it, and then we'll begin to unpack it. You guys ready? Here we go. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I'm reading out of the New International Version. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. I'm going to read that one more time. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Okay, so what jumps off the page? Well, when I read this, the first thing that jumps off the page is I recognize how personal this verse of scripture is. Notice here, when you look and read it all, how many times does the Lord say you? How many times, guys? Look at them, count them real quick. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Four times. Four times in one scripture, the Lord says you. Talking about the individual you here. Guys, what does that mean? Way to go, Tracy. Spelled it right and everything, bro. <laughs> so what is it telling us here? This is personal. When God says you four times, he's trying to get your attention and he's talking about an individual. He's talking about a person. Sometimes you'll read the scripture and the Lord says, I have a plan for Israel or I have a plan for the Gentiles or I have a plan for etc." But here we see God's plan for the individual person. Okay. God is saying, I have a plan for you. Everybody say me. Everybody say me right now. God has a plan for me. You know, when I woke up this morning, this is what I was thinking about. I was thinking about how God has a plan for me. He has a Chris plan. He has a Tracy plan. He has a James plan. He has a Rob plan. God has an individual plan for you. And it's awesome. And, and guys, what I want you to understand here, when we think about Christmas and we think about hope, I want you to understand right now that God has a unique plan for you. So then if that's the truth, and it is, then the question for me becomes, well, if God's got a plan for me, is it a good plan or a bad plan? God has a plan. Is it a good plan or is it a bad plan? Watch this. For I know the plans that I have for you. God says, I already know the plans. I've got plans for you. Guys, do you not understand that, that before the creation of the world, before you were ever even born, God had a plan written for your life? There is a Valerie plan. There is a Carrie plan. There is a Mark plan. There is a Sylvia plan. Guys, God has a plan specifically for you. And I'm going to talk about the importance of that in a few minutes. So if God has a plan for my life, is it a good plan or a bad plan? Check this out. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. And that's, Jeho that's Yahweh. That is God saying, I'm God and I have a plan for your life. Now he's got my attention. God's saying, can we all agree that God created everything? Yes, he did. He created every one of us. Yes, he did. And then God says, and I have a plan for you, Chris. I have a Chris plan. I want to know what this plan is. Is this a good plan or is it a bad plan? And look what he says. I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Guys, God has a plan. Oh, I got chili bumps, right? <laughs> I've got chili bumps right now. God has a plan for you. And it's a good plan. He's got a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. He has a plan to give you hope. And he has a plan to give you a future. Now, I want to show you something here that I think is absolutely amazing. And I want to read it out of the translation from the Hebrew because I think it's so, so powerful. Declare, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. I want to focus on that, prosper you for a moment. And here's what the word is there that is translated. It's that word shalom that you've heard. But notice what it means here, guys. Watch this. This is God's plan for you. Tracy, I want you to check this out, bro. This is God's plan for you. He said, I want to prosper you. And this is the Hebrew translation of this word to prosper you. Because, and here's why I wanted to do this. Because we can, this translation, we can think prosper. And some of you might think, well, it's only, it, God wants to bless me just financially. 
Well, God does want to bless you financially, but if that's all you see, you're missing the whole point. God says, I want to plot, prosper you. I want to bless you. Watch this. This is the translation. I want you to be complete. I want you to be sound. I want you to have good welfare. And I want you to have peace. Watch this. I want you to have safety and soundness in your body. And thank God that you're part of an organization that cares about the health of your body. And God's plan for your completeness includes your safety and your soundness in your body. He wants you to be whole in your body. It says here, the translation is welfare, health. God cares, cares about your welfare and your health. Watch this, guys. It keeps going. It gets better. It gets better. God cares about, look at this. This is the translation. God cares about your peace. God wants you to have peace. Are we in a world where there's not a lot of peace? Yeah, but here God says, I want you to have peace. And then notice the next word here is so beautiful. It says, and God it says, I want you to have quiet. Some of you right now need quietness in your soul. You need quietness in your life. Some of you are facing strife. Some of you are facing division. Some of you are in the middle of a storm in your life. And God says, look, I want to bless you. I want to prosper you. I want you to have soundness in your body. I want you to have health. I want you to have peace. And I want you to have quiet. You know, did you notice, if, if you notice the story when Jesus is on the boat with the disciples and the storm comes up and all that, and Jesus speaks to the storm and you know what he says? Peace, be still. And the storm became quiet. You know, right now, I know some of you need that shalom peace in your life. And you need everything just to, to be at peace and be quiet. And God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to bring you peace, to bring you health, to bring you soundness in your body, to bring you quiet to the storms that are in your life, guys. To the storms that are in your life. Here's another translation of this word here as we unpack this word meeting in Jeremiah 29, 11. Tranquility. Another translation of the Hebrew here is contentment. God wants you to be contented. He wants you to have contentment in your life. You know, there are times I, I've been out, I don't know if you, if some of you all like to do this, but you know, I'm a farm boy. I love being out in the country and and there, there's nothing that, that is quite as satisfying sometimes than to be out working on the farm or maybe you're out mowing your yard or you're working on a project and then you get that project done and then you step back. Bob, I saw you on here. You step back and you look at this job and you realize when it's finished and here's, what, here's, here's that feeling. Here's that feeling. That's a feeling, guys, of contentment. Why? Because the work is done. And I can rest in it now and I can be content. And the Lord says, I have plans for you to prosper you, to bring you contentment where you can look and survey what's around you and have peace and wholeness and quietness and contentment. Oh man, but he keeps going. He keeps going with this guys. Then he says, I want you to prosper. What else does he want us to prosper? And he, he's already said, I want, to, want you to prosper in your body. I want you to prosper in your health. I want you to have peace in your soul. I want you to have peace in your surroundings. Notice this next translation here. It says he wants us to have peace and friendship. God wants us to have and bless our friendships. And it speaks here of human relationships. God wants to bless and give us blessings and prosperity in our human relationships. Man, guys, what a blessing that is. God wants us to look around and, and see the people around us that, and just love the people around us. Peace and contentment and prosperity in our relationships with the people that are close to us, our family. But notice here, the actual, actual translation is our friends. God wants to bless you with good friends and thank you, Lord, for bringing us into an organization that has good friends and good people. Peace in our good friends and our good people around us. So we have peace and goodness in our human relationships, but we also have peace with God. 
in a covenant relationship. So, so I want to unpack this again. Okay, I want to unpack this again. God wants us to have, I'm going to read this again because now that I've unpacked this for you, I want to read the scripture again so that you can get the grasp of what God's saying here. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you in your body, in your finances, in your relationships, that you can find contentment in yourself, that you can find hope and contentment in your relationships where there's goodness, that you can find peace in your surroundings, peace in everything that's going on with you. And notice here he also says, peace with me. God says, peace with me. Peace and contentment with our friendships, but more importantly, peace and contentment with God. That is God's plan for you. God's plan for you. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you in all of these areas in life. And notice this, not to harm you. Not, you to, not to bring destruction in your finances. Not to bring destruction in your relationships. Not to bring destruction in and calamity in your body, not to bring destruction in, in your family, not none of those things. I want to bless all of those things. What you see in the world going around you, I don't want you to have that. I want you to have my peace, my blessing, my anointing. That's what I want for you, God says. What an amazing promise. And then he says this. He keeps going. What an amazing Christmas gift, right? Plans to give you hope and a future. See, those two things, hope and a future, hope is out in front of us. It's, it's like faith. It's something that we're expecting, something that's out in front of us. So God is saying, I want to bless you. I want to prosper your body. I want to prosper your relationships. I want to prosper your environment right now where you are. But he also says, I have plans for a hope out in front of you and a future. Not just right now, but I've also got amazing plans for your future and your hope. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that incredible? That's for you. That is for you. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans that I have for Tim. I know the plans that I have for Shauna. I know the plans that I have for Jim. I know the plans, God says, and they're good. And I want to bless you. So here's the question, guys. Does this not sound good? Does this not sound good? Who would not want to be a part? God saying, I have a plan for you and it's awesome. That is amazing. And as I read that, I go, and this is what I was thinking about in my, in my time this morning. I'm thinking, wow, God has a hope and a future and he wants to bless me now and all that. But here's the question. The question is, how do I receive that? That's the question. How do I receive that? If God has all that for me, watch this now. And I'm not experiencing this right now. What's the disconnect? How do I get that? How do I receive this hope and this future and this plan that God has for me? How do I receive that? Now, this is the big takeaway tonight. Are you ready? I'm moving around a lot. I think I'm making the camera shake down. Here's the thing. God wants you to have this amazing future and a hope and, and this blessing and this prosperity that it has for you. That's his plan for your life. It's good. But notice something, guys. I don't want you to miss this. You say, how do I receive this? How do I find this out? Look at this. Don't miss it because maybe you have before. Jeremiah 29, 11, first part of the verse. For I know the plans that I have for you. So whose plan is it? Is it your plan or God's plan? Who's the plan maker here? Come on, somebody. Who's the plan maker? Put it in the notes there. Put it in the comments. Who makes the plan? Who is it? God. God is the one that makes the plan. Notice what God is saying here. For I know, God says, the plans that I have for you. 
God is the one that makes the plan. It's his plan, not necessarily my plan. Guys, let me ask you a question. How many of you have planned out your life? <laughs> How many of you have made plans? Here's my five-year plan. Here's my whatever, whatever plan. This is my plan. Do you know that Jesus talks about that in the New Testament? He said, hey guys, I know what you do. Some of you make plans and say, we're going to go do business or we're going to go travel or we're going to do such and such. And, and Jesus said to us, he said, guys, you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. You put a 10-year plan together. You put a five-year plan together. You do all these things. And there is nothing wrong with planning. But watch this. If your plan is different from God's plan, you're wasting your time. If your plan is different than God's plan, you're wasting your time. So what is the key? My brother Rob just nailed it. I need to seek God's plan more than my plan. Ren, we were kind of talking about this this morning. I need to seek God's plan more than I need to seek my plan. So how does that work? How do I get to that place to where I'm, I'm seeking God's plan over my own plan? Well, guys, this is what you have to do. It, it comes down to something that's very, very simple. You know what the scripture tells us? That man makes his plans, but God anoints his path. God, God, God is the one that, you know, we make plans, but God directs our steps, the scripture says. Man, man makes a plan, but God directs his steps. So here's what needs to happen. Some of you might, when you read Jeremiah 29, 11, you can see that the scripture says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. It's God's plan. For I know the plans that I have for you, period. End of, end of story, God's plan. And there are good plans, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. So God talks about us, but he also talks three times about plans. But each time we see God's plan here, it's God's plan, not our own plan. So here's what a wise person does. This is Wiser Wednesday. This is what a wise person does. If God's plan is to prosper me in my body, if God's plan is to prosper me in my finances, if God's plan is to prosper me in my health, if God's plan is to prosper me in my relationships, if God's plan is all about my future, then what I need to do is get on board with God's plan and stop trying to chase my plan. Wow. Wow. I know some of you here were from the church when I was pastoring for many years, and you've heard me say this probably hundreds of times, but it is the key to, to coming into the fullness of what God has for you. See, the reason some of you guys may be struggling in your life right now is maybe you're following your plan, but you're not following God's plan. Maybe you're following your plan for your life, but you're not following God's plan for your life. And so I want you to imagine, I was going to draw this out for you, but I'm just going to do this. I want you to imagine that, that my hand, pretend it's a straight line, okay? And this is God's plan for your life, okay? And, and what most of us do, what many of us do, is we do this. We're following our plan. Now notice every once in a while, my plan crosses with God's plan. And for a season, maybe I walk with God, but then I get back on my plan. And then I go back and forth. And, and we just, I, I can spend my life crossing back and forth between my plan and God's plan. But God has made very clear here that he has a crisp plan. And so if I want to stop fighting God, guys, listen to me. Listen to me. If I want to stop fighting God, what I need to do is surrender to God's plan for my life. Rob, you just said it. Jesus, guys, Jesus, in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night that he was betrayed, 
the night that he was betrayed by Judas and and the soldiers were coming to get him, the priests were coming to get him, the, the time the scripture says is he knew his time had come. Jesus is in the Garden of Eden and notice what he says here, or not the Garden of Eden, he was the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus said these words, he said, Father, my time's come, I know my time's come. If it's possible, take this cup from me. But not my will, your will be done. Guys, we've got to stop fighting God and we have got to surrender and submit to his plan for our lives. Now, I'm gonna get a little deep on you here because somebody needs to hear this. I need to hear it, but somebody else needs to hear it. When we fight God, we bring ourselves pain. We bring pain upon ourselves because we're fighting him and we're going in directions he never intended us to go. And he says, my plan's good. Doesn't mean it's not hard or it's not challenging, but he says, my plan for you is good. It's to give you a future and a hope and it's to prosper you in all these areas of our, of our lives. But, but sometimes we get outside of the track of that plan and, and we end up reaping in our body physically. We begin reaping in our body financially. We begin reaping in relationships, destruction. And what happened is we get away from God's plan we get away from God's plan and we follow our own plan and it brings us pain. So here's what I want you to do for Christmas. I want you to read Jeremiah 29, 11 again and I want you to analyze your own life and, and see if you have submitted to God's plan for your life. And again, I'm not saying it's easy. Jesus followed God's plan and it cost him but it was for our benefit, wasn't it? But I want you to know, in this life, you're going to experience pain. But when you experience pain, if you're walking in God's will, he can redeem that pain and do amazing things with it. Amen? I've experienced that and I know some of you have as well. So just because you follow God's plan doesn't mean it's always easy. But I can promise you this, if you follow God's plan, he wants to prosper you in all those areas we talked about in your relationships, giving you peace, giving you contentment. He can bless you even in the midst of the storms of life if you're submitted to and surrender to his plan for your life. So here, here's what I would really love for you to do for Christmas. Here's what I think would be amazing for you to do for Christmas. Why not surrender your plan to God? Why not surrender your life to God? Why not receive the forgiveness that he has for you? Why not receive the gift of Christmas that is Jesus and receive healing and hope and peace? Guys, some of you have been to, trying to run your life so hard and run your plan so hard and it has brought you nothing but pain and destruction. It's time to stop chasing your plan and start surrendering and submitting to God's plan. Seek his plan for your life. Why not receive the gift of Christmas this year and say, Lord, here I am. Take me. I receive Jesus. Father, forgive me for chasing my own plan, which I have asked for so many times in my life. And why not allow his amazing plan that he just told me he has. He said, I have a crisp plan and it's good, but you've got to surrender to me. You've got to, you've got to follow my plan. You know, the scripture tells us that when we're walking along the path that the Lord has for us, the scripture tells us that we will hear a voice behind us say, this is the way, walk in it. He'll tell us, this is the way, walk in it. But we have to surrender our will to his will and allow him to work in and through our lives. Guys, you've got to do that. Stop trying to get your own way. Stop trying to make things happen. Surrender your life to God's plan and then follow in the steps that he has for you. You know, we, we've we're able to be a part of such a beautiful company that does that and believes that. We're surrendering to God's plan. And look at what he's doing. He's changing so many lives. 
as we begin. This, this is the core of living a wise life. If you want to live a life that is wise, what you need to do is surrender to God's way of doing things. And if you surrender and submit your life to God's way of doing things, he will do something amazing in your life. I'm going to tell you this and then we're going to close tonight. I'm so excited about this, guys, because this is the everything. I mean, you could just follow this one verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. If you just would choose to follow this in your life and surrender to God, your life would be radically different. A year from now, you would not even recognize who you are and where you've come from. Guys, can you see that? If you would just follow God's way of doing things, we are our own worst enemy. So, you know, so many of us think that the, the devil is our worst enemy. No, we are our own worst enemy most of the time. And it comes down to the decisions that we make. And it's really fundamentally simple. Am I following God's plan for my life or am I following my plan for my life? Guys, that's kind of it. Now, don't beat yourself up. Just surrender to him. Ask for the forgiveness that Jesus paid for. Receive the gift of Christmas. Receive the gift of Christmas. God has blessed you to be part of an amazing organization. Soak it up and receive for it. He wants to prosper you in your body. He wants to prosper you in your mind. God has surrounded you with Dr. Gibbs and Rob and Ronnie and, and Greg and Sylvia and, and James and all these amazing Trish and Kennedy and all of us amazing people that are here for you. He's surrounded you with all amazing people. He's given you amazing products, but this is just part of the picture for your life. The big thing is, the big thing is, have you submitted your life to God's plan? Because if not, you're gonna get what you get and you're not gonna like it. You gotta do things his way. So, we're, so I'm gonna end with this. God has a good plan for you. And you're gonna love it. I can, I can. If, if I was to translate this, let me let me take some liberality here. I'm gonna translate this. This is what I would say. I would say this. I would say, Tim, I have an amazing plan for your life, and it's beyond your comprehension. I'm gonna bless you in every area of your life. I'm gonna bless you financially. I'm gonna bless your family. I'm gonna bless your relationships. I'm gonna bless your health. My plan for you, if you'll follow my plan, it is so amazing. It, it is gonna blow your mind. You, you can't believe what I have for you. And it's not just where I have for you now, but it's gonna give you a future and a hope. Even as you walk through life, the plan that I have for you out there is beyond, it's, it's gonna blow your mind. It's crazy. It's incredible. It's beyond your comprehension. But this is what I need you to do. I need you to trust me with your life. I need you to hand over the reins of your life. I need you to let me drive in your life. It's time to get out of the ditch and it's time to let me be in control and then let me stay in control. And if you'll do that, I can promise you that this is gonna be the most amazing ride you've ever been on in your life. And at the end of the day, you're gonna look back on your life and go, wow, I never had any idea how good life could be until I gave God control of my everything. You know, Jesus came at Christmas to save our lives, but he also came to give us a hope and a future. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. That's here. God wants us to have everything that he has for us. Jesus paid that price. So guys, let's receive that. If you're walking away doing your own thing right now, just stop. Receive the forgiveness. Surrender your life to him. Open your hands up to him. And let him have control. Amen? Amen. I want to pray for you tonight. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for every person that's watching this right now. And Lord, I thank you for the people that are gonna watch this later, some maybe even months from now. Lord, I pray that wherever they are in their life in this moment, that you have brought us all together for this time. And Father, I pray that these words would ring true. These are your words, Lord. 
Jeremiah 29, 11, that you had this unique, amazing plan for each person that you loved so much, that you loved each of us so much that you sent Jesus here down at Christmas and he walked this earth for 33 years and he suffered and died so that we could be free, so that we could receive the gift of salvation. So Lord, one day that we would be with you, but also that here we could experience your goodness and your mercy and the fullness of life that you have for us here. Lord, help us to receive that gift. And Father, for those that have been struggling, that they find themselves in, in a rough seasons, Lord, I pray that you would comfort them. Lord, those that have been walking in rebellion, doing their own thing. Lord, ignoring your words, going about their own way. Father, I pray that right now you would draw them home and that they would just receive what you have for them. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for what Christmas is. It is the season of hope. Lord, let us receive that hope and let it grow inside of us. And Father, in turn, let us share that hope with other people. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. Guys, I'm so thankful to have been here with you tonight. I hope you, I hope you receive something from this. Watch it again. Share it. Let's get the word out there that, that God's hope a lot is alive and he loves people. God bless you guys. Have a great night. And we'll see you next Wednesday on Life Wise, Wiser Wednesdays.